Hey everyone, I would like to take a moment and look back at all of my favorite games that were released on the PlayStation 4 because now we have officially been on the next gen consoles for a while now. I gave myself a few rules when creating this list. One of them is that it must have been released on the PlayStation 4 and not on any previous consoles. I also kept it one game per franchise and per developer. If I didn't do that, the list would mostly be compiled by from software games. I know my list may be different compared to a lot of other people, but these are the games that I truly enjoyed and moved me with the story being told. It's okay if yours is different, and if you would like to comment below your list so we could discuss it respectfully, please do so. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like to help the channel out. So let's jump right in with number 10. Resident Evil 3 might be my most controversial game on the list because a lot of hardcore fans of the original said it didn't do it justice, but for me, I had a blast playing it. The reason I picked this one over RE2 was because it was more action focused. It had less item management and difficult puzzles that didn't stress me out as much and let me focus on the gameplay. The thing I really enjoyed was the story of Jill Valentine because that was my first time playing with her in any of the games. She is definitely a very badass character. She gets chased around all of Raccoon City and spoiler warning for those who haven't played it. She manages to kill off Nemesis, this huge almost indestructible monster who knows nothing but Killing Stars members. Graphics were nice and the scary tone of the music was great as well. The game was one that I went back and did multiple playthroughs because of how much fun I had and even went as far as to get the Platinum Trophy. With Resident Evil 4 Remake on the way, I don't doubt we will get a RE5 Remake as well, which will showcase more of our beloved Jill Valentine. Horizon Zero Dawn came as a surprise to me. I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was and maybe that's why it made the top 10 list for me. A game that was a new IP from the guys who made Killzone, Guerrilla Game Studios. The gameplay was fantastic. Being able to ride the machines and explore this post-apocalyptic world was very entertaining to say the least. As you play as Aloy who is an outcast from the very beginning of her childhood, she then earns the trust of her village and even becomes the hero at the end through challenging events and a crazy plot twist. While playing the game you slowly uncover what really happened to the world and how it came to be. Anytime a game has some sort of mystery it tends to drive me to want to find out what really happened and it makes it all that much more fun to find out. With the sequel out I'm excited to continue the journey of Aloy so let's see if the team can deliver what they did with this, with this masterpiece of a game. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order nailed it in terms of what it would feel like to be an actual Jedi. The gameplay was fantastic even though it is a Souls-like game, not that it's a bad thing. They managed to do it in such a fashion that it pays off. You play as Cal Kestis right after the fall of the Jedi or more famously Order 66. You are in hiding because they are hunting down every last surviving Jedi. As you progress, Cal becomes stronger and learns the way of the Force. Some familiar faces appear in the game which is really awesome. We now know that EA is working on a sequel so I'm excited to see where the story will continue from there. I also heard that they might even get a TV show following our protagonist. This game also made me into a huge Star Wars fan. I used to watch the movies just because but now I have grown to appreciate it and love the massive universe that is Star Wars. I also played what they did when they did the free update and got to enjoy it at its best. Nier Automata is by far one of my absolute favorite games of all time. This game has one of the most bizarre and tragic stories in gaming. If you know me then well you know that is exactly my cup of tea. The gameplay switches between a top down shooter to side scroll to shooter on the fly and also it turns into a third person action RPG which is the bread and butter of the game. You play as an android who is fighting for the humans to fight off an army of machines from another world. Slowly the android 2B starts to question her own motives as the story progresses. 
I won't go into too much story details because this story is one everyone deserves to experience on their own. With having multiple endings up to 26, most are just jokes and it is also the number of letters in the alphabet. It has some of the, the best replay value out there because once you d are done with the main story, you can go back and play as a secondary character 9S and see things from his point of view. It will also unravel more of the deep and dark story. If you have thought about playing this game, don't think too much about it and just do it. The music is also some of the best. Dark Souls 3 was one that was hard to find a place on the list since I absolutely love this series and this game. Having recently played Elden Ring, it made me appreciate the more linear concept of these games. You play as an unkindled one tasked with the returning the Lords of Cinder to their thrones, dead or alive, to kindle the flame once again. From my understanding, this happens over and over after hundreds of years. The flame goes out and needs to be turned on again, because this is what happens in this world. Civilization was born and destroyed when the flame goes out or when a new lord is created. Yes, it's complex, which makes it even more appealing because you want to discover what is going on in this crazy world. I'm generally drawn more to this style of game because of the gameplay as well. Everyone has come to know that the difficult and unforgiving but well-balanced nature that is Dark Souls. It appeals to, its appeal is obvious from with the constant similar games getting put out every year after year, like Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order or Neo for example. The graphics, setting, enemies, bosses, weapons, and magic are all amazing in this game. It also feels very rewarding when taking out a boss on your own, like you achieve something that not everyone can. I hope Miyazaki goes back to this style of games because it was like the perfect package and didn't feel overwhelming like Elden Ring. Red Dead Redemption 2 is by a little game developer company that you might have heard of called Rockstar. Well, they created this little western gem which I think was a risk because this setting always seems to have some sort of taboo to it. Well, they did a great job with the story which follows the Vanderlyn gang. They were forced to move out west because of a bad robbery while they try to make more money and survive. The law and other gangs are after them. You follow Arthur Morgan, who is a loyal, kind, and smart guy, and who could, could argue that he was just following the wrong guy or made some bad decisions along the way. It has some moments that are truly intense with an awesome gunfights and some epic moments that I won't go into too much detail, but for example is when you end up on an island, which took me by surprise since the game is already massive. The graphics are very good, especially it being a huge open world game. The soundtrack was fitting for the time and setting. I know for some people it was a slow game, but if you just give it some time and enjoy it for what it is, you'll come to love it. One more thing is that this game is actually the prequel to Red Dead Redemption. That one follows John Marston's story, who was also in the gang. Highly recommend playing it if you haven't, and if you're a fan of GTA 5, since who knows when we will get GTA 6 or even a Red Dead Redemption 3. Death Stranding is one of those games that you will either hate or love. In my case, I absolutely loved it, especially being a huge Hideo Kojima fan. What I love about this game is that the story is so confusing and intriguing that it drives me to want to know what is going on in this crazy world where people's bodies that are not disposed of correctly will explode with the power of an atomic bomb. While trying to get rid of the body, you're also getting attacked by something invisible that leaves black footprints and if caught, you'll get dragged underground and die. It's completely insanity and I love it. You play as Sam Porter who was played by Norman Reedus, the guy from The Walking Dead show. Your task is to reconnect the whole United States in this post-apocalyptic world. You do that by delivering certain material and things each little colony needs. Along the way you find out what exactly happened and how do you can fix everything. You travel the world with a little companion who you grow very fond of known as BB, which stands for Bridge Baby. He helps you 
because he's in a state of death and life being premature baby. The soundtrack and the graphics are some of the best I've seen, especially on the PS4. I can only imagine what the next Kojima game will look like on the PS5. When I played it, I had to complete it 100%, so that tells you how much I enjoyed it. If I was willing to spend over 100 hours to ensure that I did everything. I won't recommend this game to everyone because it really isn't. If you like a dark and grim story, then I say play it. And now with the director's cut out, with more quality of life changes, I think it's even better to play now. Marvel's Spider-Man is a game that feels like I have been waiting for almost all of my life. After playing Spider-Man 2 on PS2, which was a movie franchise game that absolutely knelled swinging through the Big Apple, I couldn't wait for another one and we finally got it. Insomniac did an absolute fantastic job. Story, gameplay, and music were all top tier. You follow a young Peter Parker who is a lab assistant to Dark Ock and has to fight all sorts of villains while trying to protect the people of New York. This one is one I highly recommend if you haven't played it yet, especially if you're a Marvel fan. Spider-Man has to deal with so much in this game and goes through a huge ordeal and which is what makes the hero great. I would find myself just swinging through the city casually just enjoying the view and the great mechanics of the game. This was one that I had to complete 100%. I have been thinking about giving it another go before the already announced sequel where we will have to face Venom and Kraven, which is really cool is that Miles Morales will also make an appearance. From my understanding, the game is also going to get released on PC so much more people will be able to get their hands on it. God of War blew my mind with just the first boss battle in the game against Boulder. It was so intense and hardcore that I was hooked from that instance. Having been a fan of the series and having played all of them, I had an idea that this game was going to be absolutely amazing and it definitely delivered. It was a difficult choice to not pick this one as number one, but it was very close. For those who might not know, you follow the story of Kratos who is putting his second wife to rest with his son Atreus. You are then visited by a stranger who possesses strength to rival that of Kratos, the god of war. You go on a journey to spread your wife's ashes atop a mountain, but meet with resistance along the way. It's an awesome journey where you go to different realms in Norse mythology. Since Kratos killed all the Greek gods and left that place in complete chaos. With the sequel coming out very soon, I can't wait for it. I will definitely be giving this game another go on a live stream. Just so that I am completely refreshed with the story since I last played it in 2018 when it was released. Like I said, the story, gameplay, and score are all high tier. This game will go down in history as one of the greatest and... If you haven't played it yet, what are you waiting for? You know? Number 1. The Last of Us Part 2. Where do I even begin? Well, following the epic events of the first game, you play as Ellie who is hell-bent on getting revenge on her father figure Joel, who was murdered and has made some questionable decisions in Part 1. You later on see the story from a different side as you play as Abby, the daughter of the doctor who Joel killed, and you yourself start questioning Joel and Ellie's choices throughout the game, which are the, the people that you grew up fond of. This post-apocalyptic world is very unforgiving and has a sense of realism that makes it very gritty and almost scary to imagine being real. This has to be one of the best looking games of all times, especially coming out this late in the PlayStation 4 life cycle. Naughty Dog really pushed it to the limit. I also wanted to put Uncharted 4 on this list but like I said I made that simple rule only one game per developer and I went with this game. I have no clue if the team is working on part 3 which I hope they are. Not sure where they could go with the story but I'm sure the team can come up with something as amazing or even better than this game. I only recommend playing this one if you have already played the first one. It is actually getting an official remake so that will be your opportunity to try out this franchise at its absolute best. 
Well, that is my top 10 PS4 games. If you enjoyed my list, make sure to hit that like and sub and share your list in the comments below again. Thank you for watching.